Hi there, students. I'm Crystal Merdocanes, a clinical instructor teaching fundamentals of nursing practice. And today, our topic is about documenting and reporting. So effective communication. What is an effective communication? It is vital to the quality of client care. So it is very important that all nurses or healthcare providers that includes your doctors, your uh, medical technologists, your nursing aides, nurses, and other healthcare professionals that are involved in the care of patients should have an effective communication in order to render quality, safe, and quality nursing care, client care to our patient. So discussion. So what is discussion? It is an informal, informal oral consideration of a subject by two or more healthcare personnel to identify a problem, to establish strategies to resolve a problem. So basically, discussion is just an informal oral consideration of a subject by two or more healthcare personnel. This is where they discuss regarding the plan of care of the, uh, that they will do uh, for the patient and to establish strategies in order to resolve the current problem of the patient. We also have report. What is report? It is an oral. It can be oral. It can be written or computer-based communication intended to convey information to others. So the main purpose of your report is to communicate information to other health team members. We also have records, also known as chart or client record. So they mean the same thing. It can be chart, client record, or record only. So it is a formal legal document that provides evidence of a client's care and can be written or computer-based. So this means that this uh, chart this client record or record uh, is very important, especially when, uh, when it is used in legal matters. So it can serve as evidence of the nursing care that you rendered to your patient. It could either save you from any lawsuit that your patient or the significant others of your patients will charge you. So that is very important. That is uh, that is why it is very important to really um, take uh, this seriously. You have to maintain the accuracy, the reliability of uh, in recording uh, your patient care to the chart or to your client's record. We also have documenting. It is also known as recording or charting. It means the same thing. So it is the process of making an entry on a client record. So basically, it is just a, an act, a process of writing down in on the client's record. So purposes of client records. Well, we have mentioned earlier that one of the purpose is for communication. So we also have planning client care. So it could be used in the planning phase uh, of your client care. Auditing health agency. It can be used uh, in auditing. Research. Well, your client's record can be used uh, if somebody wants to conduct a research related to your patient or related to the healthcare facility. It can also be used in education. So, such as in case presentation or case studies. Reimbursement. Okay. So, your client's record or your patient's chart can be used by insurances in reimbursing uh, finances. Okay. So, it's very important that you have to really uh, write everything that had been done to your patients. Also, legal documentation, as what he have mentioned, it can be used in, for legal matters. And lastly, for healthcare analysis. 
So, it can be used to determine the, the prevalence rate of a particular disease epidemic in the particular area. So, you could have it, uh, you could review the chart for that and have the prevalence rate of the diseases that are usually uh, that are usually treated in that particular hospital. So documentation systems. So we have here types of documentation systems, source-oriented record, problem-oriented medical record, your PI model, focus charting, charting by exception, or your CBE, computerized documentation, case management model. So we have seven, seven documentations, documentation system that we could use in documenting patient care to our patients. So first we have your source-oriented record. So under that we have your traditional client record. So can easily locate forms on which to record data and easy to trace information specific to one's discipline. So when we say the traditional client record, so there is a particular sheet or form in the patient's chart that you have to record your uh, data. For example, you want to record your vital signs. So there is a particular form for vital signs monitoring only. So you have to uh, uh, write the, uh, your vital signs data in that particular sheet. And if you want to write the intake and output of your patient, you also need to look for that form for the monitoring intake and output of your patient. And you have to record or you have to write those information in a particular sheet. So it's v uh, it is very easy for you to locate. If you are a nurse uh, receiving the patient, you will just have to locate the form and there you could see the data. We also have your narrative charting. It is a traditional part of the source-oriented record. So it consists of written notes that include routine care, normal findings, and client problems. So when we say narrative charting, it's basically a storytelling. Okay? So the moment you receive the patient until the time that you have endorsed your patient to the incoming nurse. So everything that you have done to your patient, you should narrate those, uh, those things. And make sure that when you, uh, when you make a narrative charting, data should be in chronological order so what are the first thing that uh, for the first thing that you have done to your patient should be the first entry then so forth so on and so forth okay so that's your narrative charting all you have to do is to just write everything you have done to your patient in a narrative form we also have your problem oriented medical record so it is also known as your problem-oriented record or your POR. So the data are arranged according to the problems the client has rather than the source of the information. So the focus in your problem-oriented medical record is basically the problem. However, in your source-oriented uh, medical record, the main goal or the main aim of that kind of documentation system is the source so that is why uh, your source oriented medical record wants you to have an organized a uh, way of recording the vital signs the intake and output because uh, source oriented medical record uh, gives more importance importance on those sources okay on those data Whereas in your problem-oriented medical record, the main focus is the problem. So here, uh, this documentation system uh, targets the problem of the patient rather than the source of the data. Okay, So I think that's the, the main difference between the two uh, documentation systems, between the source and the problem. So advantages of POMR, so encourages collaboration. Problem list in the front of the chart alerts caregivers to the client's need and makes it easier to track the status of each problem. 
So this is very advantageous for doctors or for other uh, healthcare professionals. They will be alerted if ever they will have their rounds because they would uh, easily know what is the current problem of the patient okay because it is written in front of the patient's chart for example it was written there that the patient has cough so the doctor would immediately uh, focus his or her management on cough okay to alleviate the cough uh, uh, the cough problem so that gives that makes your POMR advantages for healthcare workers because it is orient because it is directly uh, concerned uh, about the problem of your patient however there are also disadvantages of your POMR caregivers differ in their ability to use the required charting form and takes constant vigilance to maintain an app to date problem list okay so first, let's uh, focus on the number one disadvantage. Caregivers differ in their ability to use the required charting format. Of course, um, some of the healthcare workers or some of the nurses are not used into the, the POMR uh, charting or required charting format. So they, could ha they would experience difficulties of communicating Okay, of writing down or charting those information because they're not familiar with the format. So that could be one of the disadvantages of your POMR. Next, we ha it takes constant vigilance to maintain an up-to-date problem list. So since we are focused on the problem, on the problem of your patient, so from time to time, our patient's condition changes. Okay? So, if the patient's condition changes, we also have to update the problem list of our patient. So, we need to modify or change the problem. So, that makes a disadvantageous that uh, advantageous to nurses because they have to really uh, modify each time the patient's condition changes. Because, uh, the prob for example, if the problem now is cough, then the patient's condition changes so it would be the the problem now would be focused on fever so they will have to revise they will have to modify the problem list and make another one so that takes constant vigilance to maintain an up-to-date problem list also assessment intervention must be repeated so it seems it is inefficient so for example if the outgoing nurse endorses the patient uh, to the incoming nurse so the nurse who receives the patient should also come up with his own problem list then makes his own assessment intervention okay so he or she will do it again over and over again so that consumes time okay so that makes your POMR disadvantage in this uh, in this reason so we have four basic components of POMR. We have your database, we have your problem list, we have your plan of care, and we have your progress notes. So we'll be discussing each in the following slides. So the database, when we say database, it consists of all information known about the client. When the client first enters the health agent care agency, okay? So basically these are all uh, all information known about the client that's your database when we say problem list derived from database currently kept at front at the front of the chart serves as an index to the numbered entries in the progress notes and listed in order in which they are identified so we also we already have the database so based on that database we formulate a problem okay then that problem should be kept in front of the chart so that the nurse or the doctors and other healthcare personnel concerned to the patient uh, can easily look into. Okay? And it serves as an index to the numbered entries in the progress notes and listed in order in which they are identified. 
So the problems are listed uh, based on the uh, on the time that they were identified by the nurse or healthcare personnel. Okay. We also have the plan of care. Plan of care is generated by individuals who list the problems and is made with reference to the active problems. Of course, the one who will be making the plan of care is the one who generated the problem. Okay? And uh, it is made uh, it is made uh, with reference to the if active problems. Okay? So what uh, what does the patient experiencing now? So the nurse should focus, uh, his or her, um, the nurse should focus on the current or the active present at the moment. So progress notes. When we say progress notes, it is a chart entry made by health professionals involved in client's care. So we have a format used, so PIRE. So S stands for subjective data. O stands for objective data, A stands for assessment, P stands for plan, I stands for interventions, E stands for evaluation, and R stands for revisions. As you notice, the SOPIRE format is actually utilizing the nursing process. So we have the assessment, the diagnosis, the planning, the implementation, and the evaluation, and the evaluation. So... Basically, these are the format that uh, we use in uh, charting care to our patient. We also have another uh, documentation system. It is called as your PI model. So the acronym of PROBLEMS, P stands for PROBLEMS, I stands for INTERVENTION, E stands for EVALUATION OF NURSING CARE. Consists of a client care assessment flow sheet and progress notes. So it eliminates the additional care plan and incorporates an ongoing care plan into the progress notes. Okay. So basically, uh, we chart our care to our patient using this uh, model or this documentation system. By starting off with a problem, we need to identify the problem. Then after that, we uh, design intervention and we implement intervention. Then after that, we implement we evaluate our nursing care was it effective or wasn't or was it not so we have to uh, uh, really evaluate our nursing care okay focus charting focus charting is uh, it is widely known um, documentation system uh, today most of the hospitals are using this type of documentation system so, focus charting, it is intended to make the client and client concerns and strengths the focus of care. So, it provides a holistic perspective of the client and the client's needs. So, in making your focus charting, we usually make three columns for recording. So, as you, know, as you have seen in the slides, we have the date and time. Then, we have focus and we have the progress notes. So, in the first column, we have the date and time. We usually write the date, then the time we identify the problem. And the focus, for example, in the slides, the focus there is nausea. Focus can be a problem, can be a signs and symptoms, can be a nursing diagnosis as well, or can be a strength, or it can be a... Uh, behavioral chain uh, alterations or disorientations for example and at the third uh, column for recording we have the uh, the progress notes so in your dar we have the data the action and the response so we write there d the d stands for data so we put their subjective and objective data for example in this uh, problem the data there is written uh, I quote, I feel like my stomach is filling up with pressure again and I'm nauseated. Okay? So that is a an actual verbatim or an actual statement from the patient. So you could write that one. Or also you could write an objective data based on your assessment. 
Then after the D or the data, you write letter A. Letter A stands for the action. So basically, this means your uh, nursing intervention. So all you have to do is to write all your nursing intervention. And intervention should be in past tense form, which means that you have already uh, implemented those intervention and you are actually recording it now. So that's the concept. That is why it, is it should be written in the past tense form. Okay. Then after your A, we have your R. Your R means response. So it's more of the evaluation phase of the nursing process. So you evaluate your data if the, if, uh, the symptoms were relieved or not. So you have to write it there in your response. So that means that your response should be related on your data. Okay? So focus. What is focus? Uh, so as what I have mentioned, it may be a condition or a problem. In nursing diagnosis, a behavior, a signs or symptom, an acute change in the client's condition or a client's strength. So progress notes, so this is what I have uh, mentioned earlier. So the D stands for data. It reflects the assessment phase of the nursing process. The action, or the A, it reflects the planning and implementation and includes immediate future nursing actions. And the response, the R, it reflects the evaluation phase of the nursing process and describes the client's response to any nursing and medical care. So that is your progress notes, the DAR, okay? Charting, another way of documentation system is your charting by exception or your CBE. So it only, uh, only abnormal or significant findings are or exceptions to norms are recorded. So this means that only those alterations, those, those significant findings are recorded in this uh, type of documentation system. So we have three key elements of your CBR. We have the flow sheet. The flow sheets, standards of nursing care, bedside access to chart form. So remember these three key elements of your CBE or your charting by exception. Also, we have your document, uh, computerized documentation. So we have here the electronic health records, your EHRs. These are used to manage the huge volume of information required in contemporary healthcare. So this is paperless, okay? So that means if it is paperless, it could accommodate large volume of data or information. So you don't need, you do not have to, to pile up forms of or papers. It is all recorded in an electronic device, okay? So can integrate all pertinent client information into one record, okay? So, you just have to have a tablet, as what uh, in the presentation is shown, and everything is there. The name of the patient, the, the diagnostic tests, the results of the diagnostic test, and the care that was, uh, that was given to the patient. Okay? So, it is very easy to locate, and it is very... Uh, uh, easy to use as well. We also have your case management model. So when we say case, ma uh, case management model, it emphasizes quality, cost-effective care delivered within an established length of stay. Okay, So it uses a multidisciplinary approach to planning and documenting client care using critical pathways. So case management model uh, this means that, for example, in a pneumonia case, so there is a particular uh, management of pneumonia. So what should uh, nurses and other healthcare professionals should do if the patient has a pneumonia? Then there is a particular duration of stay uh, for that particular uh, case, for example, in pneumonia. And it is cost-effective, meaning 
it limits the financial burden to uh, a particular insurance, for example, or uh, financial burden from the patient because it makes uh, it makes his or her condition manageable in just a short period of time. Okay? And uh, what is good about this uh, case management model is that it uses a multidisciplinary approach, meaning the patient is being managed by doctors, by nurses, physiotherapists, uh, respiratory therapists, and any other um, healthcare professionals that uh, are concerned to the patient. And if this multidisciplinary approach will be used, the length of stay of the patient also decreases. Okay? So the patient will be managed well and will be discharged uh, in a short period of time. And that decreases the cost of hospitalization. Okay. So that's the beauty of your case management model. We also have your variance, a goal that is not met. So a deviation from what was planned on the critical uh, pathways unexpected occurrence that affects the planned care of the client's response to care. So for example, in your case uh, management model, the, length, the, the prescribed length of stay was not achieved at that moment. So the patient, stay in the, uh, the patient stays in the hospital uh, longer. So that means that is a variance. The goal of the case management model was not met. So that is a variance. That is a deviation from what was planned on the critical pathways. So documenting nursing activities. So we need to document admission nursing assessment, nursing care plans, card access, flow sheets, progress notes, nursing discharge referral summaries. So in these particular uh, forms or aspects, we have to document. So in your admission nursing assessment, also referred as initial database, nursing history and nursing assessment, completed when the client is admitted to the nursing unit. So we also document this, okay? especially when the patients came in uh, to the ER. So we have to do our initial documentation. We have to uh, ask for the nursing, uh, for the history of the patient, health history of the patient, and we have to assess the, the patient. And it's completed when the client is admitted to the nursing unit. And if the ER nurse endorses the patient to the uh, floor or unit nurse, the unit nurse uh, would, also, uh, would also conduct an assessment or an initial uh, assessment for the patient. We also have your nursing care plans. So your nursing care plans is divided into two. We have your traditional written for each client, and we have your standardized developed to save documentation time. So we could say that when we say traditional, it is an individualized nursing care plan. When we say standardized, it, uh, there is already a pre-formed or a pre-prepared uh, nursing care plan for that particular uh, case. For example, pneumonia. There, is also, there, there are uh, prepared nursing care plans for pneumonia. So that is your standardized uh, nursing care plan. We also have your card access. So when we say card access, uh, it is actually a uh, widely used, concise method of organizing and recording data about a client, making information quickly accessible to healthcare professionals. May or not may not be part of the client's permanent record. So your cardex uh, is usually used in the hospital for quick reference. Okay, so if you want to know about the current uh, status of the patient, you could have that cardex. It's, it is just a a long sheet of 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 band paper for some hospitals. So you could find the vital information of the patient. You could have the current. You would find there the current uh, uh, intravenous uh, fluid of the patient, the medications, the diagnostic tests that uh, that were performed to the patient, or the diagnostic 
test that we'll be performing to the patient, the, the uh, special endorsements, okay? So you could find everything on that uh, cardex. So it's a quick reference as compared to scanning the patient's chart, which would be uh, time-consuming, right? Okay. So we have here cardex. It is a quick reference of the patient status. It's a modified nursing care plan of the nurses in the hospital. And those cardex tests should be updated from time to time, okay? Management of the doctors, of the nurses, uh, might change from time to time. So that cardex should be also changed, should be also updated, okay? It's very important to update your cardex from time to time. Flow sheets. So it enables nurses to record nursing data quickly and concisely and provides an easy-to-read record of the client's condition over time. So examples of your flow sheet, we have your graphing record, intake and output, medication administration record, and your skin assessment record. So this means that if you want to record your intake and output, you must uh, locate or you must find the intake and output record sheet, okay? There is a particular form or particular sheet for that intake and output data, okay? That's your flow sheets. We also have your progress notes. It provides information about the progress of a client is making towards achieving desired outcomes, okay? So basically, it's, it's a recording of what is happening to your patient. If the patient is deterior deteriorating, you have to record your assessment there. If the patient is improving, you also have to record your assessment there. So that's your progress notes. Another one is we have your nursing discharge or referral summaries. So completed when the client is being discharged and transferred to another institution or to a home setting, where a visit by a community health nurse, nurse is required. So here, after the patient has been discharged from the hospital, there should be a nursing discharge or referral summaries made by the nurse. And that referral summaries should be presented to the community health nurse for follow-up care to the patients at home or in the community. Okay, uh, That means there should be a continuity of care. Okay. That doesn't mean if the, if the patient had been discharged in the hospital, so the nurse there uh, should just let uh, that, that patient go without any, uh, without any uh, referral form, okay? So that the continuity of care should be there. And that the referral summaries is very important for the community health nurse to have in order to continue the management of the patient at home. So we have also general guidelines for recording. So when you record, there should be date and time. Timing is very important. Legible, it should be legible. Permanence, you should write in black or black pen or it or depending on the institutional or the institution's policy regarding the recording or documentation. Accepted terminologies, okay? You just have to look for universal terminologies that are accepted in uh, medical terms. Correct spelling, of course. Of course, you have to affix your signature. You need to be accurate. Sequence. Your documentation should be in chronological format. Okay. Appropriateness, completeness, it should be complete, concise, and of course legal prudence because your documentation can be used as a legal basis, as an evidence in, uh, during, the legal, during legal matters. Okay. So reporting. So when we say reporting, it means to communicate specific information to a person or group of people. So, basically, when we say reporting, it's just you have to report. You have to communicate information to a person or a group of people. That's it. So, change of shift reports. So, hand off communication. Uh, it is usually known in our, uh, here, in our hospital endorsement. Okay. 
it is basic it this it simply means endorsement uh, it is a process in which information about patient or the client or resident care is communicated in a consistent manner including an opportunity to ask and respond to questions so it is very important that during the handoff communication or the endorsement the incoming nurse who receives the patient from the outgoing nurse should actually should listen carefully and if there are unclarified uh, data or information the nurse who receives the patient should ask the outgoing nurse during that endorsement okay because the moment the nurse receives the endorsement that means the nurse the incoming nurse fully understood the endorsement process okay so he or she is liable for whatever uh, misinformation or misunderstanding that he has or he that he or she has okay so remember that you have to listen carefully and ask questions during endorsement okay so we also have is bar handoff communication tool so it allows for an easy and focused way to set in expectation for what will be communicated and how between members of the team which is essential for developing teamwork and fostering a culture of patient safety okay so this is the format of your east bar hand of communication first you have the introduction s situation b stands for background a for your assessment and r for your recommendation so when you report something for example in a healthcare uh, practitioner to a doctor you have to introduce yourself then after that you have to present a situation then you have to uh, present or the background or the history of your patient and your assessment and what do you recommend based on those uh, things that you have said to the doctor so we should have to follow this uh, format okay in reporting or making an endorsement to uh, other healthcare professionals so we have here introduction you have to state your name of course you have to state uh, your name the unit you are work you are in and the client's name then after that as what you have mentioned you have to present the situation briefly state the problem or the situation so my patient now is currently having a headache for example his uh, blood pressure is 180 over 100 so you have to present situation the patient is lying uh, on bed okay so you have to present the current situation then after that you have to state the client's admission diagnosis and date of admission state the pertinent medical history provide brief summary of treatment to date okay so you could say the history of your patient so the patient is known to be hypertensive okay the patient's uh, initial diag uh, diagnosis or impression is a hypertensive urgency okay so you are presenting the background of the patient so that the doctor or the other healthcare professionals whom you are endorsing should know what is the background of the patient then after that you have to uh, present your assessment so you have to uh, to report what is the present uh, the current vital signs of your patient the pain scale out of te 0 to 10 10 is the highest pain or the excruciating pain so you have to uh, present it one is there changes from prior assessment so you have to state here your assessment now as compared to your assessment before before the present situation happened so it's very important to really uh, to tell this to report this assessment findings to a doctor or to someone who whom you are reporting to next we have to recommend so state what you would like to see or done to specific the to specify that the care plan the, that the care provider needs to come and assess the client ask if healthcare provider wants to order any test or medication ask healthcare provider if she or he wants to be notified for any reason ask if no improvement when should you call again 
So you have to ask these things to the doctor or to whom you are reporting to. Okay? So you should follow this format. Your ISBAR format is a very uh, it's a very good way of uh, reporting your patient's case or your patient's status. So you have to really uh, know this by heart in reporting. Okay? So we also have your telephone reports. So the person receives, uh, the person receiving should repeat it back to the sender to ensure accuracy. Okay. So isbar is often used. So we use is isbar method here. Usually includes client's name and medical diagnosis, changes in assessment, vital signs, significant laboratory data, and related nursing interventions. So very important that when you receive telephone orders, the person receiving should repeat it back to the sender to ensure the accuracy. So write the complete order down on the physician's order form and read it back to the primary care provider. Then you have to question any ambiguous and usual order. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be shy to ask questions if you think you are not uh, familiar with that particular order and if you think that is an unusual order you really have to question okay have the doctor verbally acknowledge the red uh, back of the telephone order so after the doctor have said the order then you read it back you read it back then make sure that the doctor acknowledges your uh, read back okay before you uh, eventually uh, implement those uh, orders. Must be countersigned by the doctor within a, a time period based on the agency policy, usually within 24 hours. The doctor should countersign the order within 24 hours. Okay, So make sure to really uh, endorse uh, that to the incoming nurse that if ever he or she uh, sees the doctor uh, making rounds, uh, the doctor should uh, sign that particular order, okay? That protects the nurse who receives the order, making sure that that order was really, uh, uh, was uh, uh, that order came from the doctor, him or herself, okay? Very important, very important to countersign the doctor's order within 24 hours in case of telephone orders. So we also have your care plan conference. So a meeting of a group of nurses to discuss possible solutions to certain problems of a client, such as inability to cope with an event or lack of progress towards goal achievement. So it means that it's just a meeting of group of nurses to discuss the possible solutions. Okay, so that's a care plan conference. So what is nursing rounds? Are procedures in which two or more nurses visit uh, selected clients at each client's bedside. So every time, so after endorsement, nurses uh, visit their patients one by one. Okay, so they uh, they should be in groups in visiting their patient. Okay, and through that nursing rounds. They obtain information that will help plan nursing care, provide clients the opportunity to discuss their care, and evaluate the nursing care the client has received. So these are the three purposes of your nursing rounds. So during the nursing rounds, so nurses usually do all these things. They, need, they obtain information, they provide clients opportunity to discuss the, their care and evaluate the nursing care plan that the client has received prior to the uh, nursing rounds. Okay. So these are the three purposes. So I believe this is the end of my report uh, of my of our discussion regarding documentation and reporting. So thank you.